folks and welcome back to another episode on our project boat here the Haynes Hunter 600R well as you can see behind me there's clamps there's a transom and it's getting messy uh, look today the plan is to laminate uh, one sheet of 19mm um, Thermalite to the transom here which is the existing transom now for those of you that haven't been following this video and are just joining us now, the transom is actually a solid fiberglass with a um, honeycomb filling product in between each layer of glass and it's built out to about 25, 30 mil. Now, so by laminating a um, 19, 18 mil um, sheet of thermalite to that, it's going to um, bring us out to somewhere around that 55 maybe even 60 depending on how many layers of glass we put in between and on the outside of that uh, transom or I should say the inside rather so I've got all my clamps I've got some braces on the outside with bolts coming through already rigged up I'm just gonna make some chocks or some wedges to wedge on the inside against the stringers because I've left that gap left the stringers in place to actually um, wedge between there and the transom to help that lamination process get full bondage and as much as much contact on that surface with the resin as possible uh, up until now I'd been using polyester resins um, for the whole repair and a few little um, things up inside the gunnels there however now I am going to do the rest out of vinyl ester uh, purely because I was going to build a vinyl ester fuel tank and rather than buying just separate vinyl ester resin um, and then polyester resin. I'm just going to stick to vinyl ester because it's chemical resistant properties and those sort of things. It's just a, a little bit better resin for the application that we're going to use inside the boat. So I've got a 44 gallon drum of that and I've got the thermalite cut. We're going to get stuck into this transom. Guys, one thing I have done is started to fill the chines with a talc powder resin and fiberglass fibers. Um, this is purely to uh, give me a flat surface to um, glass to rather than trying to glass into the curves. Well, we've cut some wedges and uh, some braces, a bit of shoring, and um, I think with all the clamps along the top and uh, the sandwich plates in the middle and the wedges down the bottom, so that's going to be enough bracing to get this transom laminated. I'll have a few more clamps than that. So the next step is to. Um, move everything, clean everything, get all the water out of the bottom here, get everything tidied up, give everything a really good acetone wipe, and then we're going to lay one layer of 450 chop strand over the whole transom, a layer of 450 double bias, and then another layer of 450 chop. Then I'm going to mix up a resin, fiberglass strand, and talc powder putty that I'm going to smear over the whole transom just to help get uh, into those little contours and that because we couldn't get the transom completely flat uh, due to the layup from the previous owner. So that's just to get maximum adhesion across the whole surface of the transom. And then yeah, bolt it all up, clamp it all up and uh, let it go off. So that's the plan, Let's see how we go. Well, we're nearly just about ready to uh, mix up some resin. I've uh, acetone wiped all the back of the boat and the uh, thermalite board in preparation 
for glassing. I have here pre-cut all my um, double bias and 450 chop strand mat. And uh, basically what's left to do is just have everything all organized, all lined up, ready to go because once you mix that resin, you're on the clock. Like it's, it's pushing uh, something uphill. But I've got everything ready to go. I've even got grease ready for the bolts, all the spanners, all the clamps, everything ready to go in situ. Spare acetone rags, anything you can think of that might help you along the way. Remember to triple uh, the gloves up when you're doing this stuff because your hands start getting sticky. You can just rip them off and go again. All right, uh, before I start mixing, I'm just going to go around and double check that everything is ready to go and that there's nothing that I have missed. Rightio, well, we're all prepped and ready. I've uh, poured three uh, pails of resin, vinyl ester resin, about a litre and a half each, so I'll mix one at a time. I have got the uh, drum on with a tap pour, so it's quite easy to get resin out, so I'm not too worried about if I run short out there, I'll just come back and mix some more and keep going. Uh, I'm going to try and mix it to not go off as super quick, but because it's a reasonably nice warm day, sun's out, so it should kick uh, reasonably well, and it's early in the day as far as uh, our time goes. With daylight savings, we've still got a good nine hours of light or so to go. All right, well, it's uh, now or never. Let's have a crack. Well, that took about two hours to uh, do all that, which is pretty good. So, uh, the layup consisted of 450 chop, 450 double bias, 450 chop, and then the 19mm thermalite laminated and clamped to that. That's all getting sandwiched together now by the, um, the clamps and these two sandwich plates, pulling it all together with the bolts. Now, I'm just going around every sort of five minutes or so and nipping those bolts up, squashing it together even more. The resin has already gelled up, which is great. I, I want that to go off and um, it's a nice warm day. So, fingers crossed, everything there is just Mickey Mouse looking really good. There's resin bleeding out the inside. There was resin bleeding out the outside in a couple of spots as well. But um, yeah, I haven't put any relief holes in it because um, there are holes on the inside still and, and the resin's bled out through them. So. I feel there's no need to um, take any more resin out. Uh, so now I'll just uh, get cleaned up, clean everything, all the tools, get all the resin off everything. And yeah, there you have it. So that's laminating a transom. Normally what would happen is you'd laminate a couple of sheets of thermal light in there because uh, generally speaking when you do a transom, the transom would be rotten. However, uh, this being a fiberglass construction transom which was done in 2005, I really only wanted to beef it up more. Um, so that fiberglass there held a pod, which you guys would have seen in the earlier videos of the boat. And that pod swinging 200 off the back would be causing a lot of leverage. So in my, my theory, if I laminate a sheet of 19mm thermalite and then glass the hell out of the other side of that, which is the next step in this, this process, I think it's going to be one pretty rock solid transom. I might yet laminate another sheet of 14mm to the inside of that if I feel that that isn't strong enough. But once this is done and all um, tapped in on the edges, we'll get a good idea of uh, how strong it is. Alright, it's time to clean up. Well folks, here we are again. 
After a couple of days of curing the transom all clamped up, I've removed the clamps and the sandwiching. And we are left with one solid transom. So obviously now we're gonna have to tie that thermalite board and the rest of the transom back into the boat. So to do that, I'm gonna sand um, all around the edges, wax and grease remove everything because we have used grease in those bolts. So I wanna get all that off the thermalite board uh, because that will actually create a bad bond and poor lamination in those areas where the bolts are. So I'm really gonna scrub those first, then sand it, then probably scrub them again just to be 100% sure. Again, a good acetone wipe. I feel like a uh, broken record with the acetone, but it's a step that you must take. And then um, we'll do a multiple layup of 450 chop, 450 double bias, uh, and um, probably tabbing as well, and strengthen all that. Some of you are probably wondering why we are going to a well back, and some of you are probably wondering why I've kept it flat across the top. It's purely for strength. I didn't want to cut the well shape in and then laminate to that. I didn't want the boat to be flexing or moving, so I kept the whole height. And yes, I'm going to sacrifice a small amount of thermalite, but I think uh, overall the reward is uh, far greater than the uh, sacrifice for that one. So tie it all in, sand, well, sand it all up, clean it all up, tie it all in with multiple layups, tabbing, and also um, multiple layers of chop strand mat and double bias. Then, when we do the stringers, I'm going to bring the knees from the main two stringers up into the transom itself, so curb them up and make extra strong supports basically to support that outboard and that should be one rock solid transom and hopefully it never moves and I don't think it will. Alright guys, I'm going to jump into it. Start cleaning away. have it that's the transom done for now we've still got to tend to the outside of the transom trim the top and tie it all back into the uh, well back that we're going to build but for now we turn to gutting the boat and uh, this is probably one of the worst dirtiest itchiest parts of a rebuild but it's got to be done and the uh, good thing about gutting it like that is we can uh, then add some more fiberglass layers to the hull and uh, actually uh, strengthen the hull more than it was originally. So looking uh, forward that's probably what you're going to see in the next few episodes gutting the boat and laying some glass uh, back in the hull. Anyway guys thanks for watching don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified every time that we post a video. Alright guys, we'll see you in the next one.